the Hall Effect Thruster. It produces thrust by firing charged atoms into space. But unlike the gridded ion thruster, which suffers from grid erosion, the Hall Thruster works without a grid. So, how does the Hall Effect Thruster work? Step 1. Ion Creation An electron gun fires negative electrons into space, but a positive anode pulls some of them into the discharge channel. Meanwhile, xenon atoms or other inert gases are fed into the channel. The electrons then hit the xenon atoms so hard that it knocks off an electron. The xenon atoms have become positive xenon ions. But how can we increase the number of ions produced? Step 2. Electron Tornado Electromagnets at the channel entrance produce powerful magnetic fields 500 times stronger than Earth's. The field traps incoming electrons which orbit the channel 1 million times per second. The resulting electron tornado greatly increases the number of collisions with xenon atoms, resulting in many more ions and much more thrust. The electrons then lose momentum during collisions and fall back to the anode, only to flow back to the hollow cathode and complete the circuit. So now that we've made our ions, how do we accelerate them out of the channel and generate thrust? Step 3. Virtual Accelerator Grid because opposite charges attract, the positive ions are strongly pulled toward the negative electron tornado. They're then fired out of the thruster at up to 25 times faster than a bullet. So, unlike the gridded ion thruster, which uses a physical metal grid to accelerate ions, the Hall thruster uses a virtual grid made of electrons, and this doesn't erode over time. But there is a final issue. As positive ions leave the thruster, a negative charge builds up and pulls the ions back. And if no ions leave, this means there's no thrust. The solution? Step 4. Beam Neutralization The electrons from the hollow cathode serve a third purpose. For every positive ion that leaves, a negative electron is fired into the beam. They then recombine with the ions to form neutral atoms. So, an equal amount of positive and negative charge leaves the thruster, and charge buildup is prevented. But like most electric propulsion, Hall thrusters have a major drawback – low thrust. Hall thrusters are limited to about 200 millinewtons of thrust, basically the weight of a hamster. But what if we wanted to achieve higher thrust, but still use electric propulsion? Well, watch the next video to learn about the thruster with the coolest sounding name, the Magnetoplasma Dynamic Thruster.